when this changes, he's going to look silly. 1905, the official age of the Earth, I've got the textbooks, was 2 billion years. Today that's it's 4.6. That's still a lot older than what you're prepared to concede. From 2 billion to 4.6 billion is and a gigantic hold, jump. Hold the fact I've is they don't the paper. know. The guy who wrote the 2 billion was Edwin Hubble. If you read his paper, 1929, he cautioned people outside of the field to look at this as anything more than a demonstration of the universe's expanded over billions of years because it said his data points are really noisy. This needs to be done with greater precision. Okay. We've done that with greater precision. Now we got the number down to better than 10%. Wait well, you, a couple so of years, we'll get it down to 5%. You're convinced the Earth is 4.6 billion years old and that's within 10%. Uh, it's better than that. It's within a tenth of a percent. Ooh, a tenth 4. Of a percent. 4.57 billion. Plus or minus 0. 0.01. See, this kind of, this is what ma magicians do, is they dazzle the audience with these numbers, you know. Wow, watch this over here while there's a magic trick going the, on. The, the, differ the difference is, is that if the scientific community is using every which way to try to establish that, but see, why, the why, why would we be against the fact of at least looking at their evidence? Oh, I think we should. But see, the confusion comes when you tie the interpretation to, this, to the fact. Yeah, but yes, I, Grand Canyon is there. One group says it took billions of years. I say, wait a minute now. The top of Grand Canyon is higher than the place where the river enters the canyon. Rivers yeah. don't flow uphill. The river didn't make that canyon. Yeah, let, let's talk about the flood and that a little bit later. Sure. But, but the fact is, in terms of... Uh, I think you were saying, let's go back to that speed of light thing, because we, okay. we, we missed that in the other program. Yeah, we do see the stars. The, the fact is, is I think you've said now that uh, there are quite a few ways that you've measured speed of light. Right. Uh, I think 13 different tests that scientists have made in terms of speed of light, because it's been challenged within the scientific community itself. And, of course, if the speed of light uh, gets messed up, then Einstein's relativity theory goes down the tubes, uh, string theory goes down the tubes, all kinds of things go down the tube. But... Give us a little background of, of why now you feel so sure about the speed of light. Okay. When astronomers measure hyperfine split lines, we're measuring the velocity of light when the light left that star or galaxy. And astronomers have been routinely making these measurements on millions of different objects. What we see is the identical velocity of light that we measure here on Earth. Um, we've been able to do this to galaxies as far away as 14 billion light years. So the velocity of light has not changed over the past 14 billion years. That's a direct measurement. Now, we can combine that with a theoretical measurement. E equals mc squared. If you make c different, it's going to affect E or m. Uh, the velocity of light is a little bit higher for Adam than it is for us. He gets incinerated by the heat of the sun, or he don't have the elements to make Adam in the first place. Digestion. Human digestion depends on the velocity of light. We note that Adam and Eve were eating uh, in the Garden of Eden. Therefore, the velocity of light had to be the same for them as it is for us. And you so also were talking, and uh, then I'll let uh, Kent get in here, the fact is apparently... There's certain uh, lines that spread out as it gets to us. Uh, you're talking about the idea that maybe Dwayne Gish makes a proposition, for example, that light didn't come from the stars and galaxies. God sent it from an intervening point only 6,000 light yes. years out. But we can prove that's not true through direct observation. As a beam of light travels through space, it passes through dust and gas. What the dust will do is redden the continuum. It's kind of like we see the the moon during a forest fire. It gets redder and redder as the smoke gets denser and denser. And as it goes through gas clouds, those gas clouds have movements, and that's going to Doppler broaden the spectral lines. And therefore, a test of whether or not the objects came from the stars and galaxies are the more distant objects, more reddened in the continuum, and broader in their spectral lines, and it's a direct proportion. The farther away the object is, the broader the spectral lines, and the deeper the red of the continuum. Which all means what? It means the light must have come from the stars and galaxies rather than from some intervening point. And measuring that light, you get a time of? If it came from those distant galaxies, then the light must have been traveling for billions of years because the velocity of light we can measure and prove theoretically did not change. Okay, we've got about a minute 30 left. I'll okay. give you the last minute 30. Go for it. I recommend that anybody watching this call Dwayne Gish and say, did you really say that? Because I bet I got 
25 or 30 letters and calls from people saying, Hugh Ross misquoted me, he didn't, you know, he did, it, it's not correct. He there's said a, it in my presence There's a long times. website on Answers in Genesis, you know, a long expose of Hugh Ross. What about this okay. light coming? Last uh, June of two, the year 2000, at Princeton University, they speeded light up to 300 times the speed of light. In February of this year at Harvard University, Dr. Howe from Denmark slowed light down to one mile per hour. I said, I think there are, three things to, my turn now, there are three things to consider with starlight. We do not know that the speed of light has always remained constant all through history. The way we measure light now is with an atomic clock using the wavelength of a cesium-133 atom. So if light is slowing down, your clock is slowing down at the same rate, you have a rubber ruler. You're never going to notice it since but 1962. We don't use that Let me finish. <laughs> then, secondly, I mentioned earlier, you can't tell the distance to these stars 14 billion light years away. <clears throat> they might be, they probably are. But we can't measure that. And it's silly for us, for humans, little humans on Earth, to say, we know the distance to that star 14 billion light years away. It can't be done. It's high school Thirdly, trick. <laughs> the God that I worship, made a full-grown man, a full-grown garden. He didn't make two babies and put them in the garden and say, here's a package of seeds, go plant them quick, you know. There, there was the fruit already on the trees. That's not deceptive, it's necessary. It doesn't work otherwise. And the reason God made the stars was for signs and for seasons so Adam could see them. God made the stars and the light all simultaneously, or the light traveled faster. My God is not limited by stuff like that. And I get real concerned that maybe we're talking about different gods here when well, we talk about Let's Let's you know, the expand subject. this segment here because we don't want to end it right here. The fact is, is that, uh, respond to that. Okay. Astronomers view the credibility of a young Earth as being much weaker than that for a flat Earth. Wait, wait, wait. No, just this blanket statement. Astronomers okay. say, as if he's speaking for all astronomers. I just spent the last three hours with Danny Faulkner, who's an astronomer, who would love to debate you, by the way. Sure. And would you, would you be willing to do that? Definitely. Oh, please, cause, uh, please call okay. Danny Faulkner up in South Carolina. Keep going. He says you're wrong. The Earth is only 6,000 years old. Oh, yeah, based on the Bible. He's admitted to me that if you look at the astronomical evidence, there's no case. He's been arguing in print for years that young Earth creationists need to pay attention to astronomy. I do. Because they've got a profound challenge there. Now, my point was this. Given that the astronomical community... And I'll accept Danny Faulkner. I, okay? I won't give that. See, right away you're assuming everybody's on your side, and no, it's just simply not true. Hang on. Given that there are so many well-known astronomers who have put in print the statement that I've just stated, shouldn't you at least talk to those astronomers and determine why they view the astronomical evidence for a young Earth to be sure, so incredible? Sure, I'm willing to read anything, <clears throat> read anything on the topic. I'm willing to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. But I think you've got some built-in well, assumptions. about the velocity of light? I mean, clearly, there's no case for the velocity of light varying. No, don't say clear. There, is, there is a great case for the speed of light. I taught physics. We used to measure the speed of light in the hallway with rotating mirrors and a laser beam. Do you believe that astronomers can measure the velocity of light when they look at distant stars? Is, if the base for measuring the speed of light is the atomic clock, I think you it's need not. to understand you have a rubber ruler. It's Are not. there 13 different ways to measure the speed of light? There are many different ways to measure the speed okay, of light. So the fact atomic is... Atomic clocks is only one. Do they all agree? They all agree. Same answer to 10 places the decimal at all different distances, all different if times. If that's true, what does it mean? That's being measured here on Earth. No. We don't know that the speed of light, you've never measured, you've never been to the moon, you've never measured the speed of light out there. We don't know that the speed of, the speed of light may be consistent, I don't know. My point is, we don't know what light is. Is it a wave, a particle, a photon? What is, give me a jar of it and paint it red. Nobody knows what it is. What do you think? What is we, light? We know what light is. What is it? It's a photon which has both a wave property and a particle property. I mean, it's the principle of quantum mechanics. Well, you're giving it a name, but that's not telling me what it is. Uh, well, a, a light packet is a set it's of photons. It's a packet? Yes. Ziploc bag or what? <laughs> okay, we're talking about quantum... Do you believe that quantum mechanics is true? Well, I mean, not all young Earth creationists do. I don't know what your position is. I guess I'd have to get the question phrased more clearly. Well, exactly what do you mean? Einstein's theory was that the speed of light is a constant. Time is the variable. Maybe he was wrong. Maybe time is the constant and light is the variable. Okay, the velocity of light, as Einstein stated, it was for a vacuum. I mean, examples you gave were not vacuums, mm -hmm. where the velocity of light traveled different rates. Uh, it travels 186,000 miles per second but in a vacuum, and it's a physical entity. Now, a wave peak can obviously travel faster than the velocity of light. In fact, you could have the physical object carrying the light moving at just two miles an hour, and yet the peak of the wave could go ten times the velocity of light. Mm -hmm. So you're misrepresenting Einstein or relativity when you say that just because a light pulse goes faster than the velocity of light, that disproves the whole idea 
of variable speed of light or you realize constant speed of how light. Much, how much doctrine you are hanging on this one idea? You've already come to the conclusion the universe is billions of years old. And now you're going to try to force this book to say that. No, I get it but independently from the text.